So guys, in this video, we're going to start the discussion on the five zhang organs. The five zhang organs have the, they share the common characteristic of storing and also regulating the thoughts and emotions. That's the, the common characteristic of all five zhang organs, which are the heart, the spleen, the lung, the kidney, and the liver. And before we go into details of the heart, just we'll try to mention that the study of Chinese medicine and especially for the theories. Now, what you need to remember, what you need to do here is actually try to memorize the function. Sometimes you, you will confuse why, what's the reason behind there. And then actually what you need to do at this stage as the bachelor's study here is actually to memorize the function we introduce and then to and analyze the relationship among different organs. That will be enough for your future practice. Now, if you have the, if you are interested in the theories uh, or in in depth theories behind these theories, in your further study, as such as your master's, your doctorate study, you can go into details why these theories have these characteristics. So, for a bachelor level, what we need to focus on is the function and the clinical practice. So the five sound organs serve as to transform and store the essence, to store, to regulate the thoughts and emotions. The first organs we're going to introduce is the heart. The heart's location in the chest above the diaphragm and its envelope and developed by the pericardium. So that's the heart. And it connects with the small intestine meridian. In in future, after the axons qi blood and also the Zhang Xiang theories, we will go to the meridians. When we introduce the meridians, you will know why the heart meridian connects with the small intestine. And also in this condition we also says we also say that the heart and the small intestine are paired organs or coupled organs. The relationship between these two is also because of the meridian. They go they goes to each other. The heart meridian goes to the intestine the small intestine as well. So these theories of the meridians and collectors we're going to introduce in, in in the later videos. From here, what you need to remember is it can the heart connects with the small intestine, and the orifice of the heart is the tongue. So we in literature. In Chinese medicine literature, we say the tongue is similar to the fire, the flame of the heart. So the orifice is the tongue, and the function of the heart is housing the mind. Because of the heart is housing the mind, here the mind we going to we also going to explain in, de in details here, because of the heart housing the mind and the mind. Also, can you can use other words of spirit. Due to this reason, that's in the five zhang organs, the heart is the core organs, is the core organ of the five zhang organs. The heart system is the core system of the five zhang organ systems. That's why that's 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 because of the heart is housing the the mind or the spirit.
the heart, the yang organs, is because it's it's beat it keep beating. Then also the heart relate to the summer, relate to the fire. That's also why we call them yang organs. And the heart and the lung both stay in the upper jaw. We're going to introduce where's upper jaw. But from here, you just remember the upper jaw of the heart. Compared with the lung, the heart is yang, the lungs is yin. The upper jaw, the upper also yang. So the heart is considered as the yang organs in yang. The lung is considered as the yin organ of yang. So this is very similar to the morning and afternoon. You says yin and yang. There, there is yin and yang. In yin and yang, in the yin and yang theories, right? There's one category, the one characteristic of yin and yang. There's yin and yin yang with yin yin yang. That's the heart. It's the yang organs. The function of the heart. The heart governs the blood and vessels. There are two functions of the heart. The first is governs the blood and vessels. The second is how the heart houses the mind. The governing of blood and vessels is manifested in that the heart qi promotes the flow of the blood through the vessels. So here, as you can see from the orange words, blood and vessels, the heart governs the blood. It means that the heart has the in charge of the to promote the movements of the heart of the blood. The heart promotes the blood movements, and this will result in the blood be be circulated to all over the body to provide the nutrition of all over the body. And where does the blood come from? In Huang Di Nei Jing, he also described that the middle jaw receives the qi. This qi is the acquired qi, which is from, from the food and water, the food they eat. So the middle jaw receives the qi, and the qi dispersed to the heart. The qi was transported to the heart, and the heart change the qi into red color and then this red color we call them blood so where does the blood come from that's from the middle jaw and then the qi travels to the heart the heart change the qi into red color and then this red color substance we call it blood so in this case we also can see that the Formation of the blood is also part of the function of the heart. So the heart governs the blood. In this, there's one aspect the heart needs to provide enough blood in the circulation. That's in the governance of the blood. And also the blood need to make sure the the heart need to make sure the blood can move in the vessels freely. So there, there should not be any objections in the vessels. That's also the heart functions. That's why we say the heart governs the vessels. So when the heart governs the vessels, there are two aspects. The first the heart need to Make sure that the vessels, the blood can move through freely in the vessels. The other aspect that the heart need to make sure that the blood move within the vessels. So these are two, two 
aspects. One, the heart needs to promote the blood to move in the vessel. The second, the we focus on the blood needs to move within the vessels. That's also due from the governing function of the heart. The heart also needs to provide enough blood in the vessels. So that's the the meaning of the heart governs the blood and vessels. So there's the question there. That's in order to function govern to, to function well of the governing of the blood and vessels, what do we need from the heart? Or in other words, what's the function of heart qi? What's the roles of heart qi? Heart yin and heart yang in this case. The in the process of the heart promoting the blood circulation, what's the roles in of the heart qi, heart yin and heart yang? So in order to make the blood move within the vessels, we need the heart qi. We need sufficient heart qi to promote the, the flow. And the heart qi can be divided into heart yin and heart yang. What's heart yin or what's heart yang? So the blood, the physical blood we can see, the blood, the substance, we can separate them into two substances. One is the blood, and one which is hot, we, you can say the hot in. The other one is the hot yang. It's something to push. So when you see the blood, you need to think about the blood. There's one material of the blood there, and the other one something to push, to move the blood, that's from the circulation. That's the balance of these two. This is very similar to, to the picture on the right side. There's someone in the space, and in the space you can see the water. The gentleman is screening the, the tower. But as you can see, the, the water become like jelly light jelly like stay on on top of the tower the water didn't move but in the morning when you wash your wash your face you use the tower if you squeeze the tower will the water stay there or not on the earth on the ground we will see the the water will move downwards but why the water in the space doesn't move? They will stay on the tower. The the water on the ground or the water we use now on the ground will move. What's the difference between these two water? It's actually something invisible we cannot see that everyone knows from your physics, the gravity. So the gravity in this condition, the water and the gravity, the water is in the gravity. We can we cannot see the gravity, which is formless. The formless and form. You still remember which one's in, which one's yang. The formless is in, the formed is yang. The formless is yang, the formed is in. So the water which we can see, the physical water if we can see, is formed. That's in. In order to move the in, we need the yang, which is from the gravity. So the the movement of the water moving downwards is actually the the water, same as the water in the picture, this kind of water and the gravity help you to move down. So same as our blood. Our blood stay in the vessels. If there is no heart yang to push, the blood will stay there as the water here. It won't move. In order to get the, the water to move in certain direction, 
We need a hard yang to push. Hard in and consider hard in part of the blood. And then in order to make the hot ink circulate well, we need a hot yang to push. So the circulation of the, the blood circulation is actually the results of hot yin and yang, the balance of hot yin and yang, also the hot qi. So the blood, the proper blood circulation is actually related to the heart the vessels, the blood itself. In this circulation, we need to have enough sufficient heart qi. We need to have sufficient blood, the physical blood. We also need to make sure that the vessels is without objection. So these are the fundamental aspects of the blood circulation. The heart houses the mind. What does it mean by the heart houses the mind? The mind, in a broader sense, it is, it is the outward appearance of the vital activities of the whole body manifested, manifested through the expression of the eyes, facial expression, speech, and the movement of a person. In a narrow sense, it is consciousness, including the thoughts and emotions. So the heart houses the mind. Sometimes we, sometimes you will see here the translation. They use spirits. When they use spirits, it means it's exactly the same. We just, spirits is the, the translation, the direct translation from Mandarin, we just try to avoid the confusion between the spirit and spiritual. That's why we use the, the word mind, but actually the meaning is quite similar. You refer to the, the thoughts, the emotions, and also psychological activities such as your feelings is also in, in the category of the mind. Because of the heart houses the mind, and um, that's why the heart, the mind is in charge of in charge of all activities of the whole body. That's why the heart is the cold organ in the internal organs. The heart system is the core organ in the heart in the in auto, in the internal organs. And in Huang Di Nei Jin he also described that the heart is considered as the emperor in the organs. The emperor in the organs is very similar to the emperor in our society. The emperor in a, in a society, especially in the past, the emperor has the, has the most authority and controls everything in the, within the country. So why we said the heart is, is similar to the emperor? That's because the heart can control all activities in the whole body or the heart is responsible for all activities. Also the heart houses the, the heart houses the mind also related to the function of governs the blood and vessels because because the the physical materials of the mind or the, of is the blood. So these two are quite close related. The blood is the materials of the, the mind. If there's if if the patient have blood deficiency, they don't have enough blood, it will cause the mind problem as well, the mind problem. 
so they will have feel they will feel fatigue the all the emotion is not that good the thoughts or the way of the think the movement of thinking although it's not physical movement will be slower that because of the the blood is the materials of the heart so the function in order to, for the heart to function well to house the mind the function of governing the blood especially the function of promoting the movement of heart also the formation of the heart the formation of the blood that's the the function the fundamental function of the heart houses the mind then the question if we the, the question asked us why the heart can houses the mind now you can answer from these two aspects first the the heart the blood is the materials material substance of the mind which the mind need to get the supply from the material blood and also the the second is the heart has the function of promoting blood circulation the heart also can help the formation of blood so that's why we said the heart houses the mind this is so as you can see from here the function of the housing the mind and governing the blood they are related together and next we're going to introduce the emotions joy joy as emotion of the heart that's why previously when we when we introduced the five elements we we talk about the story of mr fun when he feel too happy and then that's joy true joy you're going to affect the heart and then when you get affect the heart you will cause the the path, pathological changes of mad of madness it's because of the joy or happiness is related to the heart so over joy true happy can damage the heart that's the emotion the wet as the body fluids of the heart if the sweating is the body fluids and this kind of sweating is the products of the heart essence and heart blood when we talk when we study the the qi and blood blood body fluids theories you will know that the the blood and body fluids are actually sourced from the same material that's why the sweat is considered as the body fluid of the heart so in our clinical in our clinical practice if someone sweats a lot we can use the treatments to help the heart and also this kind of patient sometimes they don't sleep well especially the typical cases for this situation is the menor menopause condition ladies in their menopause period they always have nice sweat or even just normal sweat during the day so they sweat a lot they also irritate irritation they don't they irritate and also very bad temper and they don't sleep well or flashes and see all these emotions are related to the heart and mind that's how we we see the patient from the sweat then you can conclude to the heart and from the heart you can see you can predict sometimes the patient may have some other symptoms that's because the sweat is the body fluids of the heart in this kind of treatment 
or sweating or over sweating or someone with no sweating all these are the abnormal pathological changes of the, the sweat this kind of situation during the treatment we can use herbal medicine or acupuncture technique to help the heart this is the, the fundamental theories applied in our treatments the blood vessels as the body constitutes constituents of the heart and complexion as its splendor so this is quite complicated and it actually just refers to that you can see from the complexion from the facial complexion from the face you can see the heart chi how to see the heart chi is actually from the appearance the facial appearance and why we can use this kind of what's the theories behind there that's because the heart governs the vast vessels and our appearance on our skin is also can reflect the vessels the blood circulation for instance if someone have very poor blood circulation their the facial appearance may be pale also from the nails you also can see the pale color under the nails so these are the complexions and this the theories behind here also due to the heart governs the blood and vessels because and the facial appearance is the reflection of the blood and vessels so from here from the facial appearance the facial appearance you can see the blood and the vessels the condition of the blood and vessels and from the condition of the blood vessels which organs in charge of the condition of the blood and vessels is the heart so that's why from the appearance you can see the heart condition it's from through the blood vessels if someone got hot fire or too much heat in the body in the heart they will have like flush face the tongue as the orifice of the heart the tongue it's one of the organ actually it's the the only organ or the most easy organ to observe with our skin and the tongue also full of blood and vessels the theories be behind the tongue as the of the orifice of the heart it's actually because of the the first is the same as the blood vessels of the face the complexion so the tongue is made for full of vessels and blood in the tongue that we can see the second is the the heart meridian the heart relate the heart meridian link to the tongue the tongue body so these are the theories behind the tongue as the orifice of the heart also in on the other hand that the heart causes the mind the tongue the movement of tongue is, re is related to the speech or voice but the speech and voice also related to the mind or related to the spirit so you see these are all related to the heart that's why we said the tongue as the orifice of the heart the heart corresponds to the summer in seasons the heart is the fire organs in in five organs the heart relate is belong to the fire organs the fire organs is related to the summer that's from the five elements if you don't remember this you need to go back to the five the theories of five elements from the table you can see that 
the fire, the summer, is in the same category of fire, and the heart also in the same category of fire. That's why the heart corresponds to the summer. This is in a similar to the formula A equals B and B equals C. Then we can conclude that A equals C. Okay. That's from the the theories from five elements. You see these theories, some of the theories you can you can analyze from the philosophy and most actually most of the theories we discuss here you can see from our practice when the heart corresponds to the summer which means the summer also the fire the summer can help the heart so in our clinical practice what we can see for this phenomenon is that the heart condition the heart diseases can be alleviated in summer as you can see from the statistics that for, for instance heart attack which was the severe condition or acute acute myocardial infarction the severe condition of the heart attack the blockage there these diseases are more likely to happen in winter and these diseases can be alleviated in summer that's because in summer the heart can get the backup from the summer from the especially for the this kind of patient due to heart yang deficiency in summer the summer can help the heart yang and then this kind of patient can feel better in summer. Uh, here it's very important that this patient, the heart problem is due to yang deficiency. When we study the etiologies and also the diseases, you will understand that the, the heart problem might from different the heart diseases might from different problems. Not all problems can be alleviated from the seasons only it's because of different causes we're going to introduce the pericardium a little bit pericardium doesn't consider as an zhang organ sometimes if you, if you want to match the full organs because we've got six full organs and then sometimes you ask why we only have five zhang organs that's because pericardium it's kind of zhang organs but we don't consider as pericardium as an organ so we use appendix the reason why we don't consider as pericardium as the zhang organ is because the the pericardium the function of a per pericardium it's very similar to the heart and actually very similar and all the all what we do and also our treatments do not focus on pericardium all what we do is if something happens to the heart we will blend the pericardium we will say that they injury the pericardium so in our theories, we think that the pericardium can replace the damage of the heart, which means if the pathogen attacks the heart, though in this condition, we think that the, the pathogen actually attacks the pericardium. This, this theory actually doesn't make sense in our practice, just from the theories from the the way of thinking the reason is because the the function of the pericardium and the heart are the same and also why we have this kind of theories it's actually exactly because we think that the heart is the emperor of the body so the emperor of the body is very similar to the emperor of the country 
the emperor is very important. So because of his very importance, he will never make a mistake. And he will never be attacked by the enemies. If the emperor is attacked by the enemies, the whole country will be in chaos. Same as here, if the heart is attacked by the pathogens, the body will be in chaos, which means the body will be in severe condition. That's exactly why for some unconscious disease, some patient with unconscious disease condition, we think that the diseases, the pathogen attack the heart. We use the treatments to help the pathogen relieve the heart, but literally, when we say about this situation, we say the pathogen attack the pericardium, which will try to protect the reputation of the heart. So no matter you use pericardium or the heart, the treatment will be the same. The pathogen attack the pericardium or the pathogen attack the heart, the treatment of these two are the same. So that's why we don't use a separate category to talk about pericardium. In next video, we're going to introduce the lung. Thank you, guys.